What's up, everybody? This is Carl from Techful Goodies, and today I figured we'd do a quick little project, sort of a LED refresher project. What I have is this kind of old lamp here. Honestly, it's an okay lamp, and I like it, but the problem with it is it only has really one color all the way through it. The cord is okay, but it's got a little button on it that I hate pushing. So I figured to myself, why not replace it with some addressable LEDs and that way I can control it automatically. Since it's such a small project, I wanna set it up so it's USB only, it doesn't plug into the wall. And that way when I turn my computer on, it is powered just by the computer only. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and get rid of this cable. So let's go ahead and just trim this off. Okay, all right. And now what that allows us to do is basically take this channel all the way off the outside. Right now, I can actually pull the whole thing out of the unit itself. So this comes completely out. And if I take the channel off, so I'm just gonna use the tool here to get it started. All right, now you can see it is pretty much just pulling off all the way down. And this is basically just the diffuser on top of that. All right. So set it to the side, make sure you know which is the top side. And as you can see here, all it is is a strip of LEDs on the inside. Now, like I said, it was just a warm white color. Couldn't do anything. You could dim it a little bit and that's about it. And this will give me a lot of control over the colors of it if I want. I can use white, I can use daylight. I can use pretty much whatever I want now. And then it looks like the LEDs here are just taped in with the tape that comes with the LED strip. Let's go ahead and pull this off. All right. <laughs> All right, so now next step is I have my channel here now and I also have my roll of LEDs right here. I have a ESP8266, I think it is. I'll put the link down below in case you're interested in picking them one up. I did do a full tutorial on how to get WLED installed on this. So I'll go ahead and link that up in the corner so that you can go ahead and take a look at that. But basically I have WLED installed on here. So what all I'm gonna need to do is plop these LEDs into this channel. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long it's gonna be so we can figure this out. And you can see it needs to be a little bit higher than the hole for the wires to come through. And one of the issues I'm going to have is that this does not fit through here. So I will end up going ahead and trimming these wires off. Actually, I'll do that right now, make sure I have the right length. So all we need to do, we're not going to be using these two wires here. These two wires here are for power injection. I may want to in the future, but I'm going to cut these a little shorter. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut these off here at the end. What I'll go ahead and do is pre-strip these. All I'm going to do is connect them to the uh, some breadboard wires. It won't be my permanent solution, but it'll be the solution for this particular video just to kind of show the hookup of the stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip these wires down just a little bit. All right, so now these are all stripped. And what I'm going to want to do is go ahead and put them through the channel here. Okay, and the big thing we're going to have to do is make sure that all these wires are really flat because the way this fits into the base here makes it a little bit of a tight fit. I'm a little bit concerned about getting it back into the base. So now all these wires are coming out really flat here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure out how many LEDs will fit into this channel. Okay, so that brings us up right to about 30 LEDs, which makes a lot of sense. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, is trim this off at the end here. And then I should be able to go ahead and tape this in. Just go ahead and peel off the adhesive here. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and Make sure it's running through the channel, which it's not, and glue it in. So this is gonna be the hardest part right here, is sliding it into this bottom hole. So you can see what I have to do. So I have to get all these wires through this hole and then this down into 
the fitting here, but there's not much room. So what I want to do is get all these wires out through the hole. And this is where having five hands would help. There we go. And now we're ready to wire things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire things up before we put the channel back on. That way we can see and make sure everything's working. So we wanna go ahead and separate out our wires. Red is for power, green is for data, and white is for ground. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is these breadboard wires right here will allow me to extend this over to the controller board. So the breadboards have obviously a male side and a female side. I want the female side to stay here to connect to the board, but we're gonna trim the male side and connect it to each one of these. So all we have to do is go white to white. And I'm just gonna twist these together and use some electrical tape, but um, I might go ahead and get some um, wire nuts or some Wago clips or something, something a little bit more secure uh, just for permanent installation. So we'll go ahead and hook the green up here. And red to red. So I'm gonna hook them up to this board right here. So the power goes to the VIN. Ground goes right next to it to the GND. And data goes to the D4 pin, which is starting at zero. Oh no, whoops, I cut the wrong side. Let's fix that to grab another board wire. And you don't have to use these breadboard wires. I'm doing it just for the ease of connecting it to the controller right now. And then and now that that's ready, uh, D0, one, two, three, four. Data goes on the D4 pin here. There's other data in out pins on this, but that's the first one that's default in WLED. Make sure none of these are touching. And then all we have to do right now to test it is go ahead and plug in the micro USB to the board itself. Now that that's plugged in, make sure none of the cords are touching just for the time being, because we're gonna clean that up in a little bit and plug it into USB. And it doesn't have to be into your computer, it can actually be into a wall socket. But there we go. Not sure if you can actually see that too well on the camera, but we are lit up and it's actually doing a little bit of animation, basically the animation that I had already put in there. Here it is from the top down. All right, that's it. So at this point in time, all I have left to do is go ahead and reinstall the channel and then clean up these wires a little bit. But let's go ahead and toss this channel back on. And if you can see here, basically the channel has just some notches that notch back into this metal. Yep, snap, crackle, pop back on. All right, there we go, all back on. That took a little minute or so because the bottom needed to actually be, um, <clears throat> I need to actually have the bottom connected at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this back into the computer. And we have a working lamp. So it looks to me like this diffuser isn't as good as I would have liked it to be, or maybe what I need to do is just redo this whole lamp, which I don't mind because these projects are really just for fun. You can see individual LED pixels inside this. So what that means is my pixel density probably isn't enough. I think I have um, maybe 60 pixel density. Maybe I can go to 144. I might need a little bit of power for that, but for me, for now, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead and turn down some of the lights here and take a look at some of the effects. So there we go, that's the Android effect. You can see it's actually traveling all the way up. Color loop, basically loops through all the different colors. Color twinkles, which is actually kind of nice. Drip. 
So basically, just some drips going all the way down the LED strip flow. So that basically takes the colors um, and has them flow all the way through. So now I've got an upgraded lamp. Um, basically, all I've done is gone and take an old lamp that I had, put in new addressable LEDs, hooked up a controller so that I can control it with WLED. It's powered by USB, so when my computer turns on, it will turn on. It'll save the last settings that I had. So it's basically hands off. Hopefully all that made sense to you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If this was cool, you liked it, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, hit subscribe. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and I'm out.